Hi guys, this is Lucien Marie Donnie. Um, this is one of many takes all day. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this right. A couple of times people asked me if there was a better interface for recording from the Mac or from from the Mac to an audio device or record from an audio device to the Mac or from the PC. You see, there's a lot of these pre-made, inexpensive, little USB dongle thingies. I had one somewhere before. Here it is. This is a very common hack. Um, and some say, oh, it's only about five or seven pounds, so it's not that bad. Plugs in the USB port here. And then it has a microphone and that's what it is it's not line level and it has a headphone the headphone looks like a letter U so it's a little confusing but this thing here does it's a very simple solution but it doesn't record stereo so that's not going to be good enough also it produces a noise that is absolutely as annoying as a mosquito. And I'm not kidding when I say mosquito. Okay? It's a very noisy circuit. Well, Behringer made a solution to the problem. And this has been highly reviewed by many um, people called the Control you control UCA 222. Now, the UCA 222 is a device that has two stereo inputs that are true stereo, and it has two stereo outputs that are true stereo. But it also has a couple other nice features as well. As you can see, I have it here right. Number one. It's got a six foot long USB lead. This is going to be great. You don't have to have this thing like the tiny little, you know, one meter cord. This thing's six feet long. That's a lot longer than most people really would need. It has four RCA jacks on the top. So you have two for input and two for output. That's not all. It has the ability to set up the monitoring jack. So like when you're listening to your sources, like if you want to record something from the computer to a, um, an e or to a cassette or something like that, you have the jack you can plug in with your headphones so you can sing at the same time and it'll go through. And that's not it. That's not the only thing it's got. That doesn't just have the headphone jack. That's that. And if I control for set him, oh no. What's this big fat square? It's a toss link connection. That's right. You can plug in an optical cable to record to optical input. So this is also an interface converter for digital audio. That is, the digital audio goes to your input of your amplifier or to the 2009 Mac Pro or to a the Power Mac G5 which means now you can record directly optical if that's your thing so what I want to do now is we are going to try to record this again we did this test so many times and I got so fed every time so let's get started so let's let's get to the record screen the first thing you're going to see right now is we're usually going to call it aggregate device. So if I go to record device, you'll see it's an aggregate. The aggregate device lets us connect the two codecs into the one device. The reason is, and you see it's up to record four channels, we can also do other things too, like rescan channels. So the audio settings, of course, is going to be the ones you want to know about. You'll see we're recording at the default rate of 44100 which is standard. You don't normally need to change that. You can, but
but for this point, we're not going to do that. So let us start by running the record button right now. Now, here you can see we are now recording four channels at the same time. The first two channels you're seeing are from the UCA222. And the other two are from the Behringer Q1202 USB built-in interface. They're pretty close, but you will notice that the UCA222 has more volume and has a little more beefy gain. So for the reason of this test, for the turntable, I am going to set the turntable to 0 dB gain. I'll leave the microphone where it is, which is pretty close to where you want it, just so you can hear it. We're not going to play the whole album, because it was meant as a test. This is a stereo test record, and it is, for this, more than satisfactory as a test. It also should not have a problem with copyright with YouTube either. So let's begin. The producers of Project 3 Records, the Total Sound Stereo, and the editors of Popular Science Monthly have designed this test record in order that you may adjust your stereo system to faithfully reproduce the full range and dynamics of sound which today's advanced recording technology places within your record's grooves. This side of the Project 3 test record provides a series of reasonable but comprehensive tests to evaluate and adjust your reproduction equipment for optimum performance. It has been made under the most carefully controlled laboratory conditions to ensure its accuracy. Carefully controlled what it means, what it's saying. Looking at the graph here, let's just take a look at this. Here you can see that as we was playing the record, that we can see that the right and left channels of the UCA222 was picking up more audio than was being picked up on the other two channels that's built in a barrier Q1202 USB. In both the UCA222 and the, and the other one, everything was set to flat. Same audio sources, same signals. But look at the difference in gain. The UCA222 has a much louder signal strength than the other one. To understand this, let's take a look at graphs right here, right here. Just for this example. You will notice that this here and here is much more beefy than these two, which is built into the Behringer Q1202 USB. So maybe the question you might be asking is, why did Behringer Q1202 USB have a lower gain than the input? Maybe it's because the company figured that you could amplify the signal in post-production. In both the Behringer Q1202 USB mixer and the UCA222, the audio preamp circuit is more than satisfactory. It does not have a lot of gain, a lot of noise in the signal at all. Well, I haven't exactly amplified it to point to see where it distorts you can see the graph clearly shows that the signal strength is much better when the UCA222 so now should you buy this if you're using the Behringer's built in USB uh, output and it's working for you you don't really need this, but you can have fun with this. Let me tell you something to this. Notice I record quadraphonic sound. I aggregated two channels together. Now, think about what this means. You have two channels connected together. You are now recording four channels at the same time. Two from the built-in mixer, USB to 
uh, digital to analog converter or analog to digital converter to EDC and the external UCA222. You're recording both at the same time, which means, as such, you can imagine what you could do with this if you had, say, two sets of mixers with stereo on butt. You could have front channels and rear channels, and then that is so freaking cool to think about. But for most people, are probably not going to need that. But if you want it, it's there. So, so for twenty dollars or about twenty-five, maybe about twenty. Yeah, I think it's like for about twenty-five dollars or about uh, maybe twenty pounds. Is this worth it? Yes. Does it work? Yep. And I bought two of them. For the power of the internet, I bought two! And the reason is, is because that way I have one for this computer and the other computer. Because, let's be honest, while a USB mixer with built-in USB outputs are available and they are inexpensive, isn't it nice to have the extra little flexibility but you get a mixer like, say, the M68 FC or the MC? That has only analog output, and you want to plug it into your computer. It only has USB output. Again, there's your friend, and it will do the job just fine. In fact, it will do the job better than fine. As you can see, the signal strength is definitely higher. So, that's a great thing. So are we going to use it for this? Maybe, but I want to try some other experiments with it. I'm just curious to see if we can record stereo. Oh, wait. Can we record 4.0 oh, surround sound? Oh, that's the next experiment. But for now, I want to get this thing out. I definitely say if you want to record, this little device is a good solution. Instead of buying a mixer that only that has a more expensive even if it's slightly more expensive, USB output. At least this way you can use your older legacy gear too. And that could be a big win-win. So, for right now guys, and yes, I am going to experiment and try to see if I can upload a video in quadraphonic surround sound. I have no idea how YouTube is going to react to that, but let me give it a try and see what happens. But for now, talk to you later. Bye-bye.